The Metrotech 9800 with fault locating enables you to trace your cable and locate your fault at the same time. Because the 9800 transmitter can simultaneously send two signals onto the target conductor, you can cable trace and fault locate on the same walk down the line. The Metrotech 9800 sheath fault locating system includes a transmitter, a line locating receiver, and a sheath fault locating A-frame. The Metrotech 9800 transmitter has a built-in line resistance meter to immediately assess the severity of the fault. 4.8 hertz fault locating frequency and a 1000 volt output to help find high impedance faults. An internal mixer for simultaneous signal transmission. Automatic best frequency selection. Automatic impedance matching. Poor conductor alert. And battery check. The Metrotech 9800 receiver features distance sensitive left right guidance, digital signal strength display, push button depth, continuous real time gain adjustment, current measurement, a single knob for frequency selection, and optional backlighting. The lightweight fault locating A frame has directional arrows to point you toward the fault and a fault severity indicator to help you distinguish between major and minor faults or pinholes. The Metrotech sheath fault locator will find electrical faults where the conductor has burned through the insulation to ground. Telephone faults where the protective sheath is exposed to ground, creating a path for water to short copper pairs or cause fiber to go dark. Cable TV faults where missing insulation exposes sheath to ground or allows water to damage signal carrying conductors. And street light, trace wire, and control lead faults. The SFL is not designed to find faults located in metal or plastic conduit, faults on primary electrical cables where the conductor has shorted to the bare concentric neutral or has not burned through a sheathed neutral. You can use the Metrotech 9800 line locator and the Metrotech SFL2 A-frame together to locate both cable and faults at the same time. In the fault locating mode, the 9800 transmitter sends two signals simultaneously onto the conductor. A low 4.8 hertz signal for fault locating and either a 9.8 kilohertz or an 82 kilohertz signal for line locating. In fault locating, the transmitter puts a low frequency signal onto the conductor. If the grounds are left in place, the signal will flow along the path of least resistance with only a very small portion of the signal flowing from the fault. By disconnecting the grounds at both ends, the signal can only flow through the fault, where its increased strength can be detected more readily by the A-frame. In fault locating, the signal strength and pattern at the fault matches the signal strength and pattern at the transmitter ground. The strength of the signal depends primarily on the size of the fault. Before leaving for the job site, check the transmitter, receiver, and A-frame batteries. Replace or recharge them if necessary. When you first arrive at the job site, there are several things you should do before you begin to locate. If you are working in or near a street, always wear your orange reflectorized vest and use cones, red flags, or whatever safety precautions your company requires. Consult the blueprints or as built if available to determine the general location of the cables in the area. Use transformers, meters, or other visual reference points to help orient yourself. Also look for obvious causes of cable damage, such as new construction or excavation. Because pipes and cables may carry live current, use a voltmeter before attaching the transmitter to any conductor. If electrical current is present, carefully disconnect the source using appropriate safety procedures or contact your supervisor. The target conductor with a suspected fault must be isolated at both ends. You may not be able to locate a fault if the original grounds are not lifted. Follow appropriate safety procedures when disconnecting grounds. With the power off, plug the direct connect cables into the 9800 transmitter. Because of the high voltage generated in the SFL power mode, make sure the cable leads are not touching. 
Extend the black ground lead at a 90 degree angle to the faulted conductor and connect it to the ground spike. Attach the red lead to the exposed metal of your target conductor. On the transmitter, turn the power knob to SFL. On the transmitter frequency knob, you can choose from 9.8 kilohertz, 82 kilohertz, or auto, depending on your locating needs. The auto frequency position will test and select the best frequency for locating the conductor. A flashing bar will indicate the ohm resistance of the fault on the bottom scale. A high resistance reading indicates a small fault. A low reading indicates a large fault. If the resistance reading is 5 mega ohms or more, the fault is extremely small. Having confirmed there is a fault on the cable, you can proceed with your line trace and fault locate. The first step in fault locating is to synchronize the receiver to the transmitter signal. With the A-frame turned off, place the black spike of the A-frame next to the transmitter ground with the white spike in the direction of the cable. Push the A-frame into the soil. Turn the receiver on using the pressure sensitive switch. After the bar graph displays battery strength, the receiver will automatically lock itself onto the signal phase pattern generated at the ground rod, a pattern that will be duplicated at the fault. The flashing arrow will point in the direction of the fault. You have now synchronized the A-frame. To further confirm the existence of a fault, turn the A-frame around and push it into the ground again. The arrow will reverse itself on the display and again point in the direction of the fault. It no longer matters how the black and white spikes are oriented. As long as the A-frame is not turned off, it will always point toward the fault. Before you begin your combined cable and fault locate, note the number of bars on the A-frame's LCD. As you work your way along the conductor's path, the signal strength should diminish, then increase again as you approach the fault. As you trace the line using the 9800 receiver, push the A-frame into the ground every 20 feet or so. Make sure the spikes are firmly and deeply inserted into the ground. A good physical ground connection is needed to receive a strong signal. If the arrows change direction at some point along the line, but the signal strength does not increase to the level you measured at the transmitter end, you may have discovered a pinhole fault. Note its location and continue on. As you approach midpoint between the transmitter and the fault, the bar graph will reach its low perhaps displaying just one or two bars. As you continue towards the fault, the number of bars will begin to increase. When the bar graph approaches the original level, check more frequently until you find the spot where the arrow points in the opposite direction, back toward the transmitter. Move back along the line until you find the point where a slight change in position causes the arrows to switch direction. When this happens, the fault is located at the center of the A-frame. To double check the fault, move slightly off to one side of the cable. Point the A-frame toward the fault and push it into the ground at various positions around the suspected fault. The arrow should always point toward the fault. You can further verify the fault by turning the A-frame around. After a few seconds, the arrow should reverse itself and point toward the fault. 